ever questioned the societal constructs of poverty and wealth, Mulat Tazibu does. He shatters the conventional understanding of these terms, presenting economics as an elaborate illusion, a deceptive tool that more often than not serves the interests of the powerful few. Tazibu's perspective on economics is not just unconventional, it's revolutionary. He argues that this discipline, often seen as an objective science, is steeped in subjectivity. It creates and perpetuates a false dichotomy between poverty and wealth. These aren't just abstract concepts, they're societal labels, tags that create divisions and foster inequality. According to Tazibu, economics isn't just about money, it's a power game. It's a tool used by those perched at the top to assert control, to maintain their dominance. By defining what constitutes poverty and wealth, they're essentially defining the social hierarchy. And in this hierarchy, those labelled poor are marginalised, their voices stifled, their potential unrealised. But who gives them this power? Who decides what constitutes poverty or wealth? As Tazibu points out, these criteria, these definitions, they're arbitrary. They lack a universal legitimacy. They're based on certain assumptions, certain biases that do not take into account the diverse needs and aspirations of individuals. Tazibu calls for a shift an upheaval of this status quo. He advocates for a more inclusive, a more human-centric approach, an approach that doesn't just look at numbers and figures, but considers the individual, their needs, their aspirations. In his view, economics should not be about creating divisions or maintaining control. It should be about understanding, about empathy. It should be a means to uplift all members of society, not just a select few. The deceptive nature of economics, as Tazibu puts it, is a societal construct that we need to challenge, to question. After all, a system that fosters inequality, that perpetuates injustice, is a system that needs to be dismantled. And this starts with us, with our understanding of concepts like poverty and wealth, with our understanding of economics. In Tazibu's view, economics should not be a tool for division but a means to understanding and uplifting all members of society. So let's start questioning, let's start understanding. Because economics, just like society, is what we make of it. Scarcity, a term often used to justify economic inequality, but is it real or just an illusion? This question forms the basis of Mulat Tazabu's perspective on resources. Tazabu, armed with his unconventional wisdom, boldly challenges traditional economic theories that argue resources are limited, sparking competition and inequality. Instead, he presents an alternative perspective, one that believes in the abundance of resources provided by our planet. He contends that the real issue is not scarcity, but rather an unequal distribution and exploitation of resources. The concept of scarcity, according to Tazibu, is a construct, a crafty illusion created by those in power to maintain control over resources. This idea encourages us to re-evaluate our current economic system, to question the so-called scarcity, and to work towards a more equitable resource distribution. For Tazibu, scarcity is not a fact, but a construct that needs challenging. Let's take a moment to ponder over this profound thought. Who determines our needs and desires, society or ourselves? This query forms the cornerstone of Mulat Tazibo's philosophy. He underscores the importance of individual autonomy in shaping our needs and desires. According to Tazibu, we often find ourselves caught in the web of societal expectations that dictate what we should want, how we should live, what we should wear or eat. He sees this as a symptom of a consumerist culture that imposes artificial needs on individuals, leading to a perpetual cycle of dissatisfaction. Tazibu challenges us to rise above this imposed narrative, to question these artificial needs and desires. He advocates for a shift in perspective, for individuals to take charge of their own lives, to define their own version of fulfilment and satisfaction. True wealth, according to Tazibu, lies in the freedom to live life on our own terms. So, where does this leave us in our understanding of poverty and wealth? We've journeyed through Mulat Tazibu's perspective, challenging the conventional notions of economics, poverty and wealth. We've explored his belief that economics, as we know it, is a deceptive tool, preserving social hierarchies and perpetuating inequalities. 
We've unpacked his arguments against the illusion of resource scarcity, a construct that he believes is used to maintain control over resources and fuel competition. Tazabu urges us to question these societal norms, to redefine our values, and to determine our needs independently of external influences. He encourages us to seek wealth not in material possessions, but in the ability to live fulfilling lives, free from the constraints of societal expectations. It's a perspective that invites us to see beyond the boundaries of our current economic system. In the lens of Tazabu, we are encouraged to challenge the norms, redefine wealth, and strive for personal growth and well-being.